Thank you for tuning in to Restoring Your Life, an outreach of Life Application Ministries in Mount Ockham, California. Hi, this is Linda Lang. I'm going to be taking us on a journey through teachings, insights, and practical application for healing and restoration. Now buckle your seatbelt, hang on, and enjoy the ride as we continue Restoring Your Life. Father, thank you for an opportunity to just visit with the people watching in today and helping us learn from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week I started a new series. We're going to walk through Psalms together. And so you want to grab a hold of your Bible. I use the King James Version, Easy Reading Bible. So we're in Psalm 2. And again, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to read the scriptures and I'll allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me as he wants me to interject and talk about things. Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Why do the heathen rage? Who are the heathen? Who are the heathen? People who don't believe are heathen. You know, there's a lot of other scriptures that says those are heathens. You know, that they don't believe like they believe. They're a heathen. <clears throat> and in this one, it also talks about why do the nations rage? That's another interpretation of heathen. Because there's a lot of nations that are raging against, warring against each other. And the people imagine a vain thing. You know, most of our raging and most of our warring with each other is because of our thinking. <laughs> We're thinking somebody's getting over on us. We're thinking that, you know, um, the government's doing this. We're thinking that they don't love us. That we're thinking they're going to take our money. We're thinking they're going to take over. You know, so we've got this combatness going on in our thinking. And that's a vain thing. That's thinking erroneously. Because if we think like God thinks, we wouldn't be thinking those things. We would be thinking how to love our neighbor. How to provide provision, how to train and teach and to love on one another. That's what we would be doing. So anybody that doesn't believe in what the word teaches is a heathen. They're not believing the truth. Can there be a heathen Christian? Possibly. Is what you what are you believing? <laughs> are you believing what the word says? Or are you believing contrary? Are you believing what the world says? Um so why do the people imagine a vain thing? Why? You know, this is David asking, why, oh God, why? There's another why question. Matter of fact, um, I'm going to be doing a conference called Need Answers, and we're going to be addressing the why questions. Why am I not healed? Why do, uh, you know, who's stopping my blessings? What is going to happen to me tomorrow? And these are the who, what, where, when, why questions that we have. And definitely come to this conference. It's October 13th at the Holiday Inn Express in El Dorado Hills, California from 930 to 430. If you contact me from watching this show, I will give you a free ticket. It's a $20 value. So definitely give me a call. And I'll give you one for a guest as well. You, you need to be here. We're going to be addressing things that we're going to be talking about even today. Because when you talk about the Word, you're going to talk about the whole Word. And nothing but the Word. So help us God. And we need God's help to do this. <clears throat> and so who do the heathen rage and the people imagine of anything? Why are they Imagining so many bad things. You know, we can ask ourselves, why am I thinking this way? <laughs> why, why, why? We got to stop and ask ourselves that question. Why am I allowing these thoughts to come into my mind? Because what you think, your body follows. What you think is what you believe. So we have to change our thinking. Are you thinking heathenly or are you thinking heavenly? <laughs> so uh, I remember somebody saying, to be heavenly minded is to be no earthly good. That means their heads are always in the clouds. I like that. To be heavenly minded means to be more earthly good. Don't you think? Okay, verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. See, when they were talking about the heathen, and in this passage it says that the heathen are the nations that are rising up, they set themselves uh, and the rulers take counsel together. And we're going to put it into today's jargon because this was Old Testament. These are kings talking. But what about you? Are you talking and taking counsel with other people like you? 
And you know, that's where they have these gossip groups, you know, oh, that person did that. Oh, they did. Oh my goodness. Well, do you know what happened to me? And, and you start these little things. What you're doing is you're taking counsel together with heathen thinking. <laughs> you know, that's what we're doing. And, and, and I'm trying to bring it into a practical, personal today application. Who are we taking counsel from? Last week I talked about taking counsel from godliness. Okay, that's the truth in the word of God. And who are we taking counsel with in this passage is who are we hanging out with? Who are we hanging out with and listening to and taking counsel from? It says, and, it, and it's against the Lord. Well, wait a minute. If you're a Christian and you're hanging out with people and you're getting counsel from each other, but you stop, start to gossip and you start, well, I need to just tell you something so we can pray about it. <laughs> no, you're gossiping. And that is taking counsel from the ungodly. And that is against the Lord. So we can actually do that. And of course, there's actual people that actually do do ungodly things that are completely contrary to God. But I'm talking to you believers. I'm talking to the Christian because I'm going to help you to refine, define, and clean up your heart. Clean up your life. The Lord says he's going to come back for a church without spot and blemish. So let's not let any spots and blemishes be in there. If you want to talk about it more, listen to the previous uh, video. You can go to my website even. I have them also there. You can look at them again. And on YouTube, <clears throat> the Psalm chapter 1 talks about that. You've got to get it, how to get rid of that stuff out of your heart, that chap, that stuff that prevents you from really living a godly life. Then it goes on to say, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So what we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. We have to look at what's going on around us and decide, Lord, are these people good for me? Is that person I'm hanging out with good for me? You know, the Lord says for us to hang out with people that helps sharpen us, not dull us. It's a choice you have to make. Maybe it's going to be very hard. Maybe you have a friend that you've known for 35 years, but every time you get together, all you do is talk about the past, talk about what's wrong, talk about people. It's time to... It's time to move on. It's time to say, you know, Lord, I want to slowly release this person so I can go find people that will sharpen me, people that will encourage me and strengthen me, that I can also strengthen and be a part of. And that's what he wants because uh, we are to cast away those cords. And, you know, I love this book. I call it, um, Do You Have an Unbiblical Cord? That's one of my books I've written, and it's about soul ties or codependency, connecting with people that are not good for you. You know, you walk into a room and you see them there, and all of a sudden your buttons are being pushed. That means you've got a cord attached to them. Is it unbiblical? Can they pull your strings? He wants you to cut all those cords asunder. This is what this word is saying to you. He wants you to cut them. doesn't mean you have to get rid of them out of your life. It means you need to cut them emotionally, forgive them. That will cut off cords emotionally. You will love them. That will cut cords emotionally so that you can walk into a room and not be pulled by anybody's strings. You can still enjoy the people, but you can be you. You won't be that to that person. You won't be that to that person. You won't be that to that person. And you're all over the board. You don't even know who you are. You cut those cords of those emotions from all these different people and you'll be who you are. Maybe you won't like who you are because you've never known who you are. But that's the, that's the lie because when you really know who you are, then you can really love yourself. You can't love yourself being pulled in 15 different directions with all these cords. He wants you to cut them asunder. And you do that through forgiving every person that you feel like is pulling your strings. Oh yeah, it's huge. Matter of fact, you want to learn how to forgive really from your heart and cut these, you know, these strings off? Come to our conference. It's um, coming up October 13th. Very soon here, you contact me directly, I will give you a free ticket just to come and learn how to forgive. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's going to be awesome. All right. And it says, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. All right. So many people think God is a angry God with a big stick ready to hit you on the head. He laughs far more people than you give him credit for. He smiles. He says a merry heart does good like a medicine. He has a merry heart. He laughs because he goes, what do they think they're doing? They're, they're not going anywhere with this, you know, because God is greater than everything that we think is bad. He's laughing. He laughs at the calamity, people. 
He doesn't go, oh, I'm so scared. He doesn't. You need to start laughing. You know, I have a friend. She's gone with the Lord now. She used to sing with me. Her name's Barbara. I loved her. We call her each other bosom buddies. Um, but she would laugh about calamity. She would laugh about, you know, her kid got into trouble at school and she'll just kind of, huh, well, you know, and laugh. She knew the principle of laughing. And the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Now, again, we're talking Old Testament scripture and we're going to bring it currently because sometimes if we are in a place of gossip or, or anger or fear, uh, the Bible says his wrath is upon that. Okay, why? His wrath is upon any sin. See? But Jesus covered the sin so there'd be no wrath. So that you can be cleansed and purged and healed. So God's not ready to hit you on the head with a stick. We're bringing, we're fast forward and get into the period of grace where we live. That these are things that we can read and glean from and apply it to today through the lens of Jesus Christ. You see, so we don't look at it and go, oh, he's wrath and vexed and his sword is pleased with me. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you would take that and say, wow, it says his sword displeasure. But I'll tell you what, Jesus took on the sword displeasure so that we can become beautiful to the Lord's eye. You're never displeasing to God. You are never disappointing to him. You might be disappointed to yourself. You might displease yourself, but God is never there. He laughs. He's got joy. He knows the future. He knows what's best for you. He knows what you can have. And he's going, come on, you can have this. Quit looking at yourself through the lens of displeasure towards yourself because I have never found displeasure in you. And he says, yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Do you know that you are kings and priests? As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you are a king and a priest unto our God. And he says, yet, that word yet, that means even though all this is happening, even though you're not exactly perfect, even though you are acting uh, displeasing to yourself, looking in the mirror and saying how ugly you are, all these things, he says, but yet I will set my king on my holy hill that is a promise to you. And he will never go back on his promise. That no matter what is going on in your life, he will set you up because you are a king and priest. The Bible says that we are king and priest unto our God. We're not just little worm servants. We are kings and priests. One day we're going to rule worlds. I know that's getting a little far from for some of you, but we can talk about that later when we get into the book of Revelation. But, we are kings and priests, and he's setting us up on a high. You know, one of the songs I love singing is called, I Choose Joy. And uh, in one of the words in there, it says, um, we are under circumstance and care, and God wants to know what I'm doing under there. <laughs> you see, we're to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. And he does it by lifting us up and putting us up on a hill, if you let him. You got to let them. And you let them by saying, you know what? Yeah, I might have done that. Yeah, I might have said that. Yeah, I might have sin sinned there. Yet, because I am a king and a priest unto my God, I am a king that he sets me up above all that. You've got to grab a hold of that truth. See, being a godly person, a righteous person, not a perfect person, but a pure-hearted person is to believe what I just said. That you are a king and a priest unto God and he can set you up on high above all the stuff you think you're under. That is a choice. Can you feel it already? Can you actually sense the stuff here and you way up here? I remember uh, it's been, uh, gosh, I've been doing this for years. But there's a scripture that says that the Lord lets us sit in heavenly places. So I look at that as going... That means I can sit with Jesus right where he's sitting. So in the morning, as I'm starting to not feel so good, getting out of bed, you know, get tired, you don't want to get up, whatever it is, I lay there and say, Lord, I want to be elevated into where you are. I want to be set up on your holy hill. It's like we're just saying right here. And I am going to imagine, we can use our imagination, 
I'm going to imagine myself sitting with you in the heavenlies and my feet dangling down off the clouds. So whatever, however you want to imagine it. And guess what? When you're up that high, the world is a little tiny ball about this big, maybe even a speck. All your troubles, all your worries, all the situations are down here. And you're so far above it, it can't even touch you. That's where we need to dwell. It says that I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That means you will dwell there. Verse 7, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. It's talking primarily about Jesus, but get this, this is written in this before Jesus was even born. So it's not talking only about Jesus, talking about you and I. For you are my son, my daughter. This day have I begotten you. You know, when you are born into a family, it's not by happen chance. God put you in that family. There's a purpose. You might say, oh, why did God put me in this family? This is a horrible family. I don't even know my dad. They abandoned me. Whatever it is, he did it on purpose because you could be the light. You could be the person that pulls it all back together again if you rise above and allow God to put you up on that holy hill. And it says to me, it says right here, Ask of me, and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. We are talking about believers and unbelievers. So as we serve God, as we believe that He has begotten us, as we believe we are in a position that uh, where He has put us on purpose, now we can ask God. If we sit there and go, oh, I wish I wasn't living here. You start asking God for stuff. There's no foundation. There's no f starting point. Stay where you are. Stay. Okay, I'm at this place. This is where I'm at today. Now I can ask. If you try to ask when you're flopping around and God tries to give you the answer, he's going to go plop it here, but you're over there by now. Or you're over there and you, you know, he can't give you it because you're not in one place to receive. Your position is to be founded and rooted and grounded in Him, ask of me, then I will give you everything. I will give you everything for your inheritance. I will give you people in your inheritance. And I will give you the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Now, you want some stuff? Start doing this. Start believing that you are the king and the priest. Start believing that all that stuff that you think about yourself is washed underneath, way down below your feet. And you're up there with the heavenlies. I'm telling you what, that's going to open up doors that you've never seen open. And then it says, You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So the individuals, the things, the people, the sins, all that stuff will be broken off of you. You shall break them with a the rod of iron. This is God doing it. God is going to break all this stuff out of you. He's going to cause everything to be broken into teeny tiny pieces that it will not even affect you anymore. I mean, you've got this gigantic situation in your life. It's this, this, it's in your face. It's like, I can't get past this. God's going to take his big hammer and not hit you with the big old stick. He's going to hit that with the big old stick and he's going to crush it into many, many pieces. It's going to come to the floor like dust. And it's going to be gone. That thing will no longer torment you. That's his promise. Because he set you up on high. So now he's telling you this. Be that, excuse me. Be wise now, oh you kings. Kings and priests, that's us. Be instructed, which I'm doing today. And we're gleaning from the word. You judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear. You know, there's a lot of people that go, well, uh, you know, I'm afraid of God, so I'm going to have to serve Him. Now, that's not the kind of fear we're talking about. The fearing of God, some people say, is to reverence and just respect Him. That's good. But one of them is in Psalms. It says to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I, I like that. That makes it simple. Cut and dry. is to just simply despise evil, not want anything to do with evil. To keep a pure heart. That's how you serve the Lord. Because fear, it can be said so many different ways. There's like 365 definitions of fear in the Word of God here. And to serve the Lord with, let's, say, let's put it this way. Serve the Lord with truth, justice, and joy. That's fearing God. Believing Him. 
and rejoice. So we start rejoicing with trembling. That means that when we tremble, we are experiencing the power of God. Trembling, we look at as shaking and trembling and sweating and uh. No, trembling can be, wow, this is so awesome. That's the kind of trembling I like. I don't know about you. And then it says in verse 12, kiss the sun lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they all that put their trust in him. See, there's the opposite side of the wrath, the anger, the vengeance, all of that. See, he always gives you the other side of things. But blessed are all you who put their trust in him. There is no wrath. There is no rage. There is no anger when we put our trust in God. He will laugh at your enemies. He will laugh at your situation. He will cause you to be rejoicing in all things because he's put you on high. He's put you above. He's, he's caused you to be up. But you have to choose it. You have to say, Lord, I feel like I'm under all my circumstances right now and they're overwhelming me. I'm so overwhelmed, God. Have you ever felt that? Maybe you feel like that right now. I felt that. But when I take all that, that I'm, you know, it's, I mean, first of all, I write it all down because sometimes when I write everything down and I go, oh, is that what, is that it? Because your mind, ex, you know, it amplifies everything. Okay, so I go, oh, okay. But then what I do is I also say, Lord, you are to cause me to rise above it. I am a king and a priest. You're to put me on the holy hill. I can see myself sitting with Jesus. And when I do, I want you to do this with me. I want you to take a moment, maybe close your eyes. Just close your eyes. And I want you to see yourself. See the globe, see the world. You see the world. You're, you're standing in the world. Let's start there. You're standing in where your situation. You start to be risen. He sets you up. He says he brings you higher. So he's going to start bringing you up. And the world is getting get smaller and smaller with all your situations, your health situations, your financial situations, your family situation. And it gets tinier and tinier and tinier till you're way up here. I want you to think about it right now. See yourself sitting next to Jesus, right in the middle of Jesus and God. They're on the throne. <clears throat> Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And you're sitting right in between them. And you're looking up at him. Hi, God. Hi, Jesus. And you feel like this big, but that's okay because they're pretty big, and you just sit there. <sighs> I'm telling you what, that can change your whole day. Because now you're above all your cares, all your circumstances. And I have done this literally hundreds of times where I'd get out of bed and I don't feel none of that stuff. It's still there, but I don't feel it pulling me down, pulling me back, making me a mess, making me feel bad, making me feel sick. It's gone because I've got my thinking on the things of the Lord. Back in Psalm 1, we talked about it. The meditation of your heart, the meditation of what you're thinking is what's going to bring you up out of everything. It's going to glorify God. That's when you see it working in your life is when you've actually applied it to your life. Again, this is life application ministries and restoring your life so that we can teach you. The Bible talks about right now to take instruction. You know, we are to have wisdom, information, uh, declaration, all that. But you've got to be able to know what to do with it. Have people that have contacted me over the years that said, you know, I know what the Bible says, but how do I do it? Again, come to my conference because I'm going to teach you how to get your prayers answered. How to hear from God. How to have a relationship with somebody who doesn't love you. How to get past rejection. Okay, these are things that are practical ways to live life out. These are basic, you know, these are basic needs that need to be met. Because the whole world is a whole lot of stuff in the world. And, and if we're concentrating, you know, looking at those little things that are eating at us and, and uh, you know, messing with our thinking, we're never going to get to the next place God wants us because it's all in the way. We just have to go, okay, this is what I need to do. I need to get, take care of this, take care of that, get rid of that, and move on so I can see what... God has ahead for me. He doesn't want you to bring the old into the new. He's got to get rid of this old stuff, people. He does it through forgiving, repentance, cleansing, purging, uh, having the Lord Jesus just uh, get into your life by the power of the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to guide you, direct you. This is an exciting life. You know, I have more opportunity knowing the Lord than I ever did in the world. 
I mean, I've been able to sing the national anthem to 45,000 people at a, a baseball stadium. Um, I've been traveling worldwide and be all my, all my finances handled. Seriously, that's huge. Uh, been able to experience beautiful homes and lives and people. Be able to pull people out of despair. Um, I have a video I'm going to show right now of somebody that I've been ministering to for many years and now we're really good friends and he calls me his pastor. He's actually living in Germany right now. He's a soldier and um, I helped him in an area of his life. So why don't you just listen in for just a moment. Hi, my name is Ryan Kester and um, I'm a soldier. I've been in the army for 23 years now. And I'm sending you this video to uh, say thanks to Linda for everything that she's uh, meant to me. Um, we met each other. We didn't really meet each other. We have connected with each other through a mutual ministry here quite a few years ago. Uh, but we've actually never met in person. Uh, but Linda's ministry has meant a great deal to me. Uh, because a few years back I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and she has helped me as I've uh, gone through it. Um, she's helped me uh, identify some of the causes of Crohn's disease and um, I can say for a fact that uh, Linda's ministry um, and helping me work through uh, the roots of Crohn's disease has made it so that I have been able to stay in the military because most people who have Crohn's are not able to do anything that I'm able to do right now uh, and I definitely wouldn't have been able to stay in the army so her ministry has made a huge impact um, on my life and the life of my family um, even though we've actually never met but I mean, as a soldier, you really can't have the normal relationship that a person would have with a pastor because you're constantly moving from place to place. So Belinda's always been there for me. I've always been able to call her. Um, I've been able to call her from where I'm at. I'm currently in Germany. Um, and she's always been available to me uh, to talk to whenever I need to. And um, I believe that her ministry um, is a vital ministry. Um, for the church right now because I believe that she has insights into uh, some causes of disease and really the, the things that the church needs to learn. I've just been able to get things from her ministry that I've never been able to get from any other ministry that I've ever been involved with over the years or any other church that I've ever been in. Uh, so, thanks, Linda. I appreciate it. Um, your ministry is amazing. All right, I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Now, wasn't that fantastic? That was an amazing testimony from somebody that lives in a complete different country, all right? Yet, got a hold of this ministry, found what he needed, and now lives a full and productive life. And it was all free. Well, that's all the time I have for today. We got through Psalm chapter 2. Make sure you read these words. Ask the Holy Spirit what it wants to say to you. I'm only telling you what he said to me. And it could be different for you. Because I'm in a different place than you are, perhaps. And that's okay. Because he talks to us all differently. But he meets us where we are. So, Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to glean from your Holy Word, the Bible to be able to uh, give instruction, help with understanding and wisdom, to be able to apply these things to our lives. You want to bring us up higher. You want to set us up on top of your hill where you are at. You want us to bring us up to where you are in the heavenlies, to be able to see that our circumstances and our cares and our problems are way below our feet. Father, in that area that we live there is peace. There is peace when we are dwelling with you on your holy hill. We praise you, Lord, for your covering, for your protection, for your guidance, for your truth that makes us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, contact me if you need further ministry. You want to you know, learn more about Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You want information about the conference coming up. It's on October 13th at the Holiday Inn Express in El Dorado Hills starting at 9.30 a.m. Well, we'll see you there. You have been watching Restoring Your Life with author, teacher, and minister Linda Lang. Restoring Your Life is an outreach of Life Application Ministries in Mount Ockham, California.
To contact or support this program, visit our website at truthfreeze.org or write Life Application Ministries, P.O. Box 165, Mount Malcolm, California, 95656 or call 530-620-4641. Join us next time and continue restoring your life.